Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the obstacles I have up, but again, use your imagination. You can put poles all over. So this is a cross rail. You'll see it's up on the upper side on that uh, jump stand. And we got a pole over there, and then I got another little cross rail, but it's a smaller one. So you can do many different things with the poles. You can just put up one side, not put up the other. You can put more poles around the arena like you've seen in other videos. But uh, for today, I'm just using one cross rail, one pole, and a bigger cross rail. And then I'll show you how I take the horse over it. Hi everyone, Gay DeRusso with Majestic Rider. So I'm going to show you some more stuff about uh, proprioception and teaching a horse how to use its feet. We have some poles in here today that I set up, a cross rail, a pole, and a second higher cross rail. So this horse is very good with his feet, but I wanted to show you what I do with the horses that are not so good with their feet. So I like to start them off on the ground, and I start with lunging. And I start them just at a walk going over these objects. If the horse is really confused and doesn't know how to do it, I'll hand walk them over it first. But Shane is quite good and he's very agile with his feet. So you want to teach him slow first just to walk over it. If they're tripping at this stage, you don't want to go any faster. So and what he needs to learn is how high he needs to pick his feet to get over things, how long to hold his foot up in the air to get over the cross rail, and where to place his feet on the other side so they don't fall down. So again, some horses are very athletic like Shane, and he doesn't really need to learn this. But other horses are clumsy or don't have good proprioception or are very lazy or just don't know how to use their feet because nobody's taught them. So doing things like this will help them. So see, he hit it. He didn't get his foot over it uh, far enough, and that was fine. So if your horse just has no idea how to do it, as you do this, they'll get better. But I only do it five to ten minutes a day because it is hard. But if every day you come in and they're getting worse, like when he comes to this, he shouldn't hit it again because he just hit it the last time, so he should have learned the lesson. See how he was more careful? So a horse that doesn't know how to use its feet, though, could come and knock that whole thing over. Well, the walking horses seem to have a little bit more problems with this than some of the other horses, and some of that's their big stride. You know, it's difficult for them to get their back end over things. So we'll do it this way. Now, I didn't want him to trot. Nope. So now he jumped it. That's okay. I didn't want him to do that. I really want him to do it at a walk. So if they go fast, then you just slow them back down. Or if they decide they want to go the other way, you just stop them. Send them back out again. Remember, you're the one in charge. Easy. And it might be because the camera is set up there that he's having a, yeah, I think that's what it is. Come on. It's okay. Good boy. So we just do it over and over again until he learns that the camera's not going to get him and he should just slow down and walk. So it might take him a couple times around. That's okay. But what you're looking for as they're going over this stuff is, are they hitting the poles? Are they picking their feet up high enough? Are they getting their front legs and their back legs over it. There's many things that go along with it. And again, some horses are more athletic and some are not. And again, some have been taught what to do and some have not. So they need to learn, especially if they're not athletic. So there, he, the poles have separated a little bit, so they're a little wider there, and he just caught his foot. So again, let's see what he does this next time. So a smart horse, a horse that's thinking, will pay more attention and try to lift its feet higher, just like he did, and get over it better. But one that's not thinking or lazy or doesn't care might come by and hit that again. So you got to teach them how to pick up their feet and do it over and over again until they get better at it. And again, remember, they should get a little bit better each time. It can take days. But if every day they're getting worse or they're falling down every time they're doing these poles, 
that's not something you can rehab or teach. That usually means something's wrong with the horse. And the vet doesn't have time to go over that stuff. They're not going to sit here for six hours a day with you. So this is something you need to practice on your own to evaluate your own horse to figure out why is he tripping. Does he not know where his feet are? Can he not feel his feet? Okay, Because there's many different reasons that they can be trippy. But see, Shane learned his lesson, and now he's going slow over the poles, and he is picking his feet up high enough. So and once they can do it well, I change patterns. I try to do different things, give them different obstacles each time to do. And then, good boy, we change it up so they don't get bored. Because if they get bored, then... They can trip just because they're bored. So you give them different obstacles, use different things, and that will help your horse to learn how to pick up his feet and pay attention. You can use many different things. These poles are from Home Depot. They're not jumping poles, so they're not very expensive. They're, I don't know, they used to be a couple bucks. They could be more, more now. Uh, you, if you use PVC, those break, and the horses learn that they can just kick them out of the way, so those won't work well with tripping horses. You want poles or heavier poles, so when they hit them, it hurts a little bit, so it makes them pay more attention to their feet. And I always do it on the ground first, make sure they can do it well on the ground. I start with just poles and then I start raising them up. And then once they can do that well, then I will start riding them over it. But you don't want to ride them over it first unless the horse is agile. If you have a trippy horse, you want to make sure that they learn what to do you know, uh, before you're on them because you don't want them to trip and fall while you're on them. Right. Right. So now I'm going to show you the same exercise with Tilly, who's a Tennessee walking horse. So you can see how they move differently. Each horse is different. You'll see she has more of a problem with her back end getting over those poles because she's a little lanky in the back end and she's got a bigger stride than the Rockies do. Yeah. So some of the ho walking horses will move like this if, she's, if they're built like this. She just gates or she'll pace when she's loose. She usually doesn't trot. So if you have a trotty Tennessee walking horse, they might move differently and they might be able to get over the poles a little bit easier. But it's harder for the pacey ones than the ones that just gate. So... Tilly's always worse to the right, so, so we're going to go to the right first. And this is a great exercise to help build up your horse's stifles, besides working on the proprioception. Sometimes she's a little quick when she starts out because she gets nervous and anxious. So but you can see how she walks. She kind of twists and turns her legs, so she's got some ringing of the hocks, which is in another one of my videos. And she steps kind of into her front hoof pocket. She might step over it a little bit, but not very much. So she doesn't have a huge stride. The horses that have that real long overstride in the back end, it will be harder for them to get over the poles, just so you know. So we're going to start, but we're going to start with the uh, regular pole and the shorter jump. So again, I try to do it at a walk in the beginning so they can figure out their legs. And some of the horses will get nervous and they'll go faster over this in the beginning. And you want to be able to steer them with the lunge rope. So you got to know how to lunge first before you start putting them over poles. And see, it's much easier for her to jump that than for her to step over it. Some of the walking horses will kind of drag their back legs over things. But they move differently and that is why. But if something's big, some of them can jump really actually quite well. Good girl. So there's no certain space that I have the uh, pole and the cross rails apart. I just kind of throw them out there 180 degrees away from each other. And then it's up to her to figure out how many steps to put in between there. But you'll see she's quite good now. And she used to hit these poles a fair amount, but she I don't think she's hit one yet. Good girl, Tilly. But if you just look back and watch how uh, Shane, the Rocky Mountain, got his back legs over the jump, and then watch how Tilly gets her back legs over the, over the jump. It'll just look different. And so it's something to be aware of. Good girl. 
And you'll see even just looking at her, her back end looks a little bit kind of flatter and more slopey, and his is much rounder. So he's built more like a trotting horse, which he does trot when he's loose, and she's built more like a pacey horse. No. Good girl. And she used to be really anxious with this stuff, just running around like a nut job, kind of. And now she has figured it out and does it quite well. And she understands she's just supposed to step over it. And that's all she has to do for me to be happy. So again, if you just do this five to ten minutes a day, but do it three to five times a week, the horses will get better at feeling where their feet are and how to get over objects safely. But the only way for them to get better is they have to practice, and it's much easier for them to practice this without anybody on their back when they're trying to learn their balance. So that's why it's better to do this in the arena before you take them out on trail if they're having issues. Get their confidence up in here. Let them learn how to get over things. And that, that way, if they do trip or fall or something, it's all sandy in here, so they're not going to get as hurt as they would on the trail. Good girl. Good job, Tilly. So remember, a lot of these uh, horses that just gait, especially the walking horses, tend to drag their feet more. And then with that big reach in the back end, it's much more difficult for them to get over things. So they have to learn to really drive with their back end and to lighten that front end. Um, some of your horses out there might just plow through things. It's because nobody taught them to take their time and pick up their feet. So if your horse is plowing you down the trail or when you're going through over things or through objects, they're really just barreling through it. Most of the time they just don't know that they can go slow and relax through it because nobody has taught them that. Now, you want to do this slow, but then once they're better and they know how to do it, and she's been doing this a while, then you can do it faster. So after they've done they do this well and weeks have been going by or a month then you can start having them do it faster so I'm going to turn her and then we're going to speed her up a little bit and what will be difficult the girl is that her gait's more lateral let's see if she canters the thing she used to fall into the right she cheated there that's okay Her canter's getting better, loose, because she didn't canter very well to the right at all. But you'll see she doesn't hold that canter very well. She likes to cheat if she can. She's a smart girl. But she kind of slides in the sand. And there you saw her stifle just give out. She slides in the sand and has difficulty keeping her back end underneath her. And there you saw her trip, but the footing actually goes down right there. So it kind of gave, and she didn't fall down or anything. She just kind of fell forward a little bit. So you can learn so much by lunging them and watching them move on where they're having issues, where their weakness is. But overall, she's done quite well figuring out her feet. Because she used to be a little bit trippy. And so all I've been doing is pole work, arena work, and trail work, and helping her and teaching her what to do. Since the right is her worst direction, I always go to the right longer than I go to the left. Because I don't think she was ridden a ton in the arena, so she's weaker on that right side. So she needs to work it more to get her body more balanced. And if you work both sides the same, well, then the right would always be trying to catch up to the left. So that's why whichever side is weaker, I work that way first, and usually that way last. Okay, so now we're going to turn her. So remember, a prerequisite for this, Tilly, she's like, I'm not stopping, is 
they have to know how to lunge. If they don't know how to lunge, it'll be more difficult. You can do this loose in the round pen, but then you can't control their speed. With this, I can control her speed. If she got too fast, I can pull on the rope. Uh, so if you can't control their speed, sometimes, it, you know, they just get panicked and they don't know what to do and they just try to run through things and they obliviate the poles. So if you have a rope, then you can give a little wiggle or tell her easy and give a little tug and have them realize to slow down. So you'll see some of the time she's gating, sometimes she's cantering, and sometimes she's pacing. Now she's walking. <laughs> None of that really matters because I want her to learn how to use her feet at all those gates. So I'm okay if she's pacing in here. That's okay as long as she can get her feet up over those poles. That was very good. Usually she cannot figure out to go over that and has to jump it. And she's like, I think I got this. I'm getting better with my feet. So she did really well. She just kind of stepped over it that time. So she's getting more agile. She's getting more athletic. Some of these walking horses, you know, can seem a little spastic in the beginning, but it's harder for them. Especially if they're pacey or they just gait and they can't, uh, their coordination's not the same as some of the other horses. And so their proprioception isn't always the same. Or they've been just ridden in the arena or they've had long feet. All those things affect their proprioception and they have to learn how their feet work. So if you have one that had stacks on or long feet and then you cut their feet down or have them go barefoot, it takes time. Their tendons have to adjust, their ligaments have to adjust. All those things have to adjust and you don't want to hurt them so you want to give them plenty of time to have those things kind of stretch out and then to get used to it. And it's kind of like if you're going from high heels to sneakers, you got to get used to walking in something different, right? You don't walk the same in high heels as you do sneakers. At least the women know that. So where the men, you're walking in boots versus like loafers or something. They feel a little bit different. You got to get used to them. Okay. So when she's calm and doing this well, that's when I'm going to turn her, which is right now. Oh. So remember I said I go to the right first and I go to the right last. So this is going to be the last. She cheated again. She's a little cheater. But her cantering's going good. So see there, she got to a little uh, wrong spot. But she did good. She used to leap from like 10 feet back. She was crazy. But now she figures out, oh, I can use my other legs to get over this. So she's not, she didn't, that was the correct lead. But over there, she wasn't the correct lead. That's the correct lead. And now she's kind of just gating and pacing. But there she did that good. So she's got much more balance. She used to fall in. She did trip just right there. But she used to trip a lot more. And she used to just fall in kind of like an airplane leaning sideways. So remember, when you're going to stop this, you want it to be good, right? You want them to be doing a good job so they understand that's the answer. So that was good. It was nice and calm, except it was the wrong lead, so I don't want to stop there. So now she's just gating. The girl. And you don't want to do this for hours. It's tiring. So if they get tired, they'll get worse, not better. Good girl. So you want to go long enough, they get a workout, but not so long, they get tired and they start getting worse. So good girl. So she did that nice and calm. So if your horse was doing this and they were doing pretty well and all of a sudden they're doing bad, check the timing on it because you probably went too long and the horse got tired. And it's just like you getting tired. You can't do it as well anymore. And... Then, you know, the next time, don't do it as long. But overall, she did very well, and she used to not be so great with her feet. And she wasn't horrible. She wasn't super trippy, but she did trip. And she's much, much better. She's more agile. She knows where to put her feet, and she's not panicked anymore either. A lot of them are panicked because they don't know what to do with their feet, and they get freaked out. And so you got to reward them at the right time. you got to go long enough that they get calmer. And you have to figure out what to do when they get antsy to help them to get that message across, like that you can just do this calmly. It's not a big deal. But you have to spend time doing it. And the more often you do it, the message gets to them quicker. But 
This is a great exercise, and again, you can use more poles, you can use tires, you can use lots of different things so the horse learns to step around things. Again, if you have stairs or bridges and an obstacle course, do all those things because all those things will help that horse get more agile, more athletic, which will make it a more stable ride for you. And then if they do trip, you now know what to do, but the horse will also be quicker catching itself.